hey, it's Sam. I'm making this video um, about the vernal equinox. This is a time when the Earth receives equal light, equal day and night all over the Earth, because what happens is, um, based on the orbit of the Earth around the Sun and the way the Earth is tilted in the sky, the Sun hits the equator equally all around the Earth for this one day. Actually, also on the autumnal equinox, we have the same thing. So, it's very interesting to understand the implications of that. The music is loud in the background. I'm here at um, Powell Street Station in San Francisco. You can see all the big buildings behind me. It's a lovely little area here. It's, it's a little quiet, so I thought I would film this here. But, you know, the Earth, as it's going around the sun, is actually tilted in the sky, 23 degrees. And this tilt, what's called obliquity, is what makes for the seasons. And if this were the Earth going around the sun, when the Earth is going around the sun, and it's at one extreme, like this, then we would have the first day of summer in the northern hemisphere, because on this day, the Earth's rays are hitting the northern hemisphere the most direct, and it would be the first day of winter in the southern hemisphere. Then as the Earth goes around, we would have the opposite in the northern hemisphere on the first day of winter, because as you can see, in this case, the northern hemisphere is tilted away from the sun, and the southern hemisphere is closest to the sun. So there would be more sun on that day in the southern hemisphere than in any other day. And then on the equinox, we have something that looks like this. So you see, it's not exactly like this. I get a little annoyed sometimes when I see, um, you know, and I see, you know, graphic representations of things that are astronomical and that are totally, like, incorrect. Like, for instance, I see some, you know, graphics showing the equinox, which has, like, the Earth sitting straight in the sky and the equator going straight across, showing equal day, equal night. It's actually not like that. It's not like the Earth is sitting like this and the equator is here and the sun is giving equal light. It's like this. This is how the Earth is sitting at this time. It's no harder to make the illustrations correct. So when you have this vernal equinox, it's like the Earth is here on its orbit. Because it, on the first day of winter, which we had a few months ago, the Earth was like this, where the northern hemisphere was tilted away from the sun. Then the Earth comes around and we have the equinox, the vernal equinox, which means that the sun is equal, but it's moving north into the northern hemisphere. And then on the first day of summer, we have it here, where now there's the most sunlight in the northern hemisphere that day. And then we have the autumnal equinox, as it's still equal around the Earth each, you know, um, on that day, but the sun is then moving south toward the darkest day in the northern hemisphere, which would be the first day of winter, and the cycle continues. So this is how the Earth is actually sitting in the sky with that tilt, that obliquity, about 23 degrees, and that's what creates varying degrees of sunlight in the northern and southern hemisphere. So one of the things to really understand about what it means on the equinox is one of the, you know, you know, one of the most visceral implications is, you know, except for saying that the sun is going to be equal that day, you know, that's just one day. But it actually means that for the next six months, there's going to be more sunlight in the northern hemisphere. From equinox to equinox shows where there's going to be the most sunlight. Because from from the vernal equinox forward in the northern hemisphere, there's going to be more sunlight in the northern hemisphere until the autumnal equinox. Then there's going to be more light in the southern hemisphere for that six months until the next vernal equinox. Then there's more, then there's more um, light in the northern hemisphere. So this is the implications of the vernal equinox for us in the northern hemisphere. It's the day when it's the day that marks the beginning of 
the six month period where there's more sunlight in the northern hemisphere. And for those of you in the southern hemisphere, I know you kind of get the short end of the stick sometimes. Sorry about that. For you, it's your, it's your autumnal equinox, which means that you've had six months of increased sunlight. You've had more sunlight in your hemisphere for the last six months. And on, the, on this day, on this vernal equinox for us and the autumnal equinox for you, it shows a time when you're about to go through your autumn and winter. And of course, the first day of winter for you will be the first day of summer for us in the northern hemisphere because of the same angularity. So again, I know you've probably seen, you know, photos that has this earth sitting erect in the sky and the equator going straight across and the sun going like this. It's actually like this. And the earth is turning, going jit, jit, jit. And on this day, it's equal, right? Equal. On this day, as you can see, that would be the summer solstice because the northern hemisphere is angled more toward the sun. Autumnal equinox, winter solstice, and vernal equinox, which is where we are now. So it's a great day to really celebrate, you know, that it's also, you know, the first day of spring. That's why it's called vernal equinox. And of course, the Western Astrological System and the Zodiac is based on that, so it's the first day of Tropical Aries. That first day of spring, the vernal equinox, first day of Tropical Aries, usually comes around March 20th, 21st each year. I recently did an update where I talked about the relationship between the Gregorian calendar and the, and the solstice events and whatnot and how there's no real correlation. You could look at that too if you're interested. But it is an important moment for the Earth and its orbit around the Sun each year because it does show this time when for the next six months we're going to have more sunlight in the northern hemisphere than we had in the southern hemisphere culminating in that first day of summer which is the brightest day in the northern hemisphere and then after the first day of summer the Sun starts to get lower in the sky until the next equinox which is autumnal which is the next time that the Sun is equal in both hemispheres which leads to the darkest day in the northern hemisphere and then on and on. So these are the these are the these are the you know what are called cardinal points in the earth's orbit around the sun. The western astrological system or tropical zodiac is based on that because of where the sun is hitting the tropics. That's why it's called that. And um, you know on the first day of summer it's hitting the tropic of Cancer, on the first day of winter it's hitting the tropic of Capricorn. This is why it's called tropical zodiac. So these are you know, the, those times when the Earth's orbit makes a shift. And to understand it astronomically, the vernal equinox is the day when the sun crosses the celestial equator moving north. On the autumnal equinox, it's when the sun crosses the celestial equator moving south. On the first day of winter, it's when the sun changes the direction and starts turning north. And on the summer solstice, it's when the sun changes direction and starts to move south. So there you have it. That's what you live on. That's the rock moving around the ball of fire that you're used to. So I hope this was helpful and put some things into perspective. Um, it's definitely it's definitely important and refers to things that you know govern our life. So for those of us in the northern hemisphere, six months of more sunlight. Those in the southern hemisphere, you've had your fun. Now it's our turn.